So my name is Craig Gallon. And I'm Dave Hustis. And we're going to talk a little bit, reminisce about our involvement in OpenNMS over the last five, six, Decades. seven years. <laughs> Goodness. So when did we first meet, Dave? So I was uh, in our, off our brand new offices in Pittsburgh in 2004, and I got a phone call and said, you described something I vaguely understood what you were saying. But you said something about a telemanagement forum conference in Los Angeles. And you were going to be using Open OpenNMS to demonstrate some uh, open source methodologies for implementing interfaces. And I think, what was it? The, what was the Java interface? OSSJ. OSSJ was brand new. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's abandoned. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, I, and you said you were going to be using OpenNMS to demonstrate these things to the telemanagement forum. And I, and any phone call that we got at that time that was interesting, people interested in OpenNMS was exciting. <laughs> so I thought, you asked if I'd be interested in that. I said, yeah. And I think I came out, and that's when we met. That's right. In Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. In um, Long Beach. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened was that... Um, uh, I was doing my uh, doctoral research at the University of Southampton, and I'd happened on the idea of what difference would open source make to uh, network management in the telecoms industry, which is something that nobody had really looked at properly. And I was trawling around for any projects that looked vaguely like they might be open source and useful to the telecoms industry, and I found OpenNMS. And we, uh, we got a number of students working on a project to develop uh, what was called uh, OSS through Java, Operational Support Systems through Java, and um, we built a little OSSJ interface which is still in the OpenNMS code, though uh, it probably hasn't been used for a while, so we don't know if it still works, but it's there. And uh, we demonstrated that at this large uh, trade show in Long Beach, and that was when Dave and I first met. Yep. So, and as he says, he didn't understand then what I was talking about, and he probably hasn't understand understood ever since. <laughs> it's been an education. Yeah, for both making, of us. Yeah, that's right. All you have to do is read your thesis to understand, yeah. which is what three or four hundred pages, hundred pages, of <laughs> incomprehensible stuff. That's right. So, so well, from it's, there, we, it's we, good. Yeah. We've done some interesting stuff from there because. Uh, we started this um, relationship at the TM Forum, and uh, relationships a good word. Yes, like all relationships, it's uh, had its ups and downs, and it, it it really they had no notion about open source at the time, and when we came along and proposed doing some open source work, all of the existing COTS vendors got very upset, and there were lots of interesting discussions that were ha that happened on the board about whether we should be allowed to do this. It was like a little hand grenade to be let off in the That's right. form. Without them, well, we, we put the hand grenade in before they realized the hand grenade was there. That's right. And then we pulled the pin and they all jumped on it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to hold, keep it from going off. <laughs> no, it was hilarious. I mean, we, we got called uh, the open source terrorists at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, people were... This is the hand grenade analogy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so they were kind of worried about uh, what this would mean. And um, a number of people tried to stop us from doing anything, which uh, was interesting. But fortunately, we had British Telecom, who are obviously a big player in uh, in the telemanagement forum, and they were supporting us in the work, so that was very good. Um, but since then, uh, we've sort of kept the relationship going, and I've been trying to promote open source, and, and uh, as a result of that, open NMS in the TM forum for goodness, the last five years. And uh, we've done a lot of work. We've built um, uh, a whole toolkit now in conjunction with what was Nortel Networks, now Sienna, Hewlett Packard, and um, Telcordia, now um, Ericsson, if they come. Yeah. Um, and um, we've uh, basically built a toolkit and, and demonstrated the value of open source. And then we've taken the work that we've done and we've built that into OpenNMS, mainly as a demonstrator at the moment. Uh, but with a view to if anybody wants us to actually implement this for real, we've got a very good starting point. And I think it's, I've always been fascinated by how small we are yeah. and how much work we have done in comparison to these much, much bigger companies within the organization. Yeah. 
and uh, I think the other thing has been just our uh, there's been a, a real sense of uh, of motivation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've we've said we want to do this, we want to make it happen. And most of the other organizations have really been, you know, it's just an experiment. It's not really real. and They haven't really wanted to put the effort in to take it to, to the next level. Um, now, as a result of that, we, we also started picking up other bits of interesting stuff. So we did uh, TL1 interface. Yeah. Uh, with we Hitachi. did that, at the, that was in Atlanta. Yeah. That's right. So, and um, we've also then started our relationship with Juniper. And other service providers have come and spoken to us as well. And, and we think, you know, it's like all marketing, advertising exercises. We, we don't know to what extent that's been as a result of our, of our team forum involvement. But we do think that it has raised our level of credibility with a number of key decision makers. Uh, at least we, we know what we're talking about as far as they're concerned. Yeah, and our, uh, just recently our relationship with BT is about to grow even more. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so the other thing then we've, we've sort of recently been looking at is the whole area of uh, smart metering. And this kind of demonstrates that, you know, OpenNMS, although it's grown up in the network management space, it also has applicability in other technology areas, and it's just really a matter of getting the message out there. So uh, somebody that we had been working with previously, um, a company called Arkiva Communications, were doing some experiments around uh, smart metering, and they picked up OpenNMS to use as, as, as a platform to help them with that. And um, it's been very successful in that deployment. And so we're beginning to widen out the scope of mm -hmm. what OpenNMS can do, and demonstrating that as a, a generalized data collection platform, it's actually very powerful. Yeah, OpenNMS is used in so many ways, sometimes abnormal ways even. You know, it's a bit so like a, a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. It's not one vertical that we're in. You know, some a lot of times customers call or people call and they want to know well, where's OpenMS typically used, and we're like, there isn't a typical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very flexible. Yeah, and we, uh, I think one thing that was interesting that just happened here this week was, even though DevJam has grown so much and we've got so much more productivity out of everybody, and I think the thing that Mike Hewitt said to me the other night, he goes, you know, this is. So so fantastic. He was like, you can't pick people like this. And I said, that's the whole point. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> they self-selected. You know? yeah. so we do have great people working on the project. And that, that's, that's actually really interesting because uh, one of the things I came across in my research was uh, a guy called Jochai Benkler, who is a professor um, in, in the U.S., lots of interest in, in open source communities. And he's proposed that, that open source actually provides a new way of doing peer-led production, which is quite different to what has been done in the past. And the key value of this is that you don't get told what to do, you self-select. And the people who self-select tend to be people who are A, interested, and B, probably very talented at the thing they want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a key value of the, the open source community that we're part of. And I think we see people come to the project because they're interested in learning some technology yes. or something. And we've always been very, thanks to Matt, but we've been very adept at keeping open NMS in the forefront of technology and not letting it get stay stale. Yeah. You know, a lot of products that we've worked with, and I'm sure you've had experience with your experience at Nortel, that, yeah. you know, they build a product and then kind of becomes that product and then never really advance the technology in it. They just let it run its life cycle. Yeah, it becomes a cash cow and they, they yeah. don't want to take it any further. Well, so it's we, interesting. we haven't had the cash cow problem. <laughs> no, no, not quite, no. <laughs> but what is interesting is that, it, you know, it's, it, it, OpenNMS has become a poster boy for certain technologies. So we, we, pick up, we picked up Spring and we've got some really good examples of how to use a Spring framework in a large open source project. Excuse me. We we're picking up OSGI now, and we will, if we carry this forwards, you know, have some really good examples for the OSGI community. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, a couple of students as interns who are working with us during this this dev jam. So again, we're committed to training the next generation on a you know a project which they can make a very significant contribution to, and yet they can carry that contribution with them anywhere they go in the future. Oh yeah, so somebody just prompted us to talk about Summer of Code. So we have actually uh, a lot of things kind of came together this week where 
Um, we have a big project running uh, that's taking advantage of some new GUI technologies, but one thing that we were doing is working on real-time uh, graphing, uh, data collection and graphing, and um, we were able to hook up what a Google Summer of Code student is providing with something we worked on here at DevJam this week with the distributed uh, real-time uh, data collection. So they put in a little graph that was just to be able to show that we were actually doing it, but now we have a very nice implementation coming from Google Summer of Code to show that. So um, the community is really producing a lot of very cool technology, and it just seems it's very fun to see it all kind of coming together where it was just, you know, in the beginning, just a few of us sitting in a room, and you said, yeah. poster child, I think sometimes our pictures got put on milk cartons. <laughs> <laughs> we never made it home, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, I mean, we, sh we should probably also just talk about the work we're doing with NoSQL as well. Oh, yeah. Um, so, obviously, you know, this is the big technology everybody talks about, things like Cassandra and Hadoop. Uh, as a scalable cloud architecture. And um, so we'll, we've had a couple of guys working now on uh, replacing the RRD collection framework with a NoSQL solution. And, um, you know, although we're in the early days of investigating that, it's definitely something that, that's on the roadmap for which we want to do. So that's probably all we want to say, really. But uh, yeah. except that, uh, you know, OpenNMS is an exciting project, there's a lot going on. There's probably a lot going on that we aren't even aware of, and uh, we're constantly surprised by the new things that turn up. Well, Craig, it's been a great seven years. Let's do seven more. All right. <laughs> cool.